Greetings folks, it's Sarah with Obadiahs. Today I'm here with John Prater of Glenwood Heaters. He is the owner and engineer of Glenwood Products. And today we are going to have him answer some of the most frequently asked boiler questions. Um, so number one, top question I get asked is, mild steel or stainless steel better for the water jacket on the boiler system? That's a good question. Uh, I need to explain to you that mild steel uh, handles uh, boiler application. Mild steel handles the expansion and contraction of, uh, of the heating cycle in the firebox much better than any other product out there uh, for the mine. Uh, you can go stainless steel. There are boiler manufacturers that are doing that. The primary reason they do that is because many of them are using it as a, because it's of a, for its anti-corrosion properties. And many outdoor boilers are open systems, and because they're open systems, corrosion happens. And so it affects the lifespan of the boiler. In a, in the, the downside to stainless steel is that it is not very ductile. And over time, that constant expansion and contraction from the heating and cooling that happens naturally in a furnace boiler, uh, it will crack and um, it won't corrode, but it will crack. So there is one grade of stainless steel that is, and some, it's a 330 alloy, that is, is designed for this application, but the expense is the cost is prohibitive, and it's not worth the expense, generally speaking. In the Glenwood products, we just shy away from stainless steel because of, because of that fact, because it tends to be, a, does not handle expansion and contraction very well at all. And so we have opted to go with a closed system. And a closed system operates under pressure, uh, about 15 to 20 pounds of operating pressure. Max blow off capacity on the relief valve is 30 pounds. And it requires more, um, a little more structural strength to do it that way. But it's a better system. You don't have corrosion problems. Then, because it's closed, since it's closed, oxygen can't get into the water. And for oxidation, rust to occur, there has to be oxygen present. So question number two is going to be, um, a lot of people ask, should I install my boiler indoors, outdoors? What do you think? What are the pros and cons? Outdoors is nice. Um, a lot of people go that route because it keeps the dirt, especially for burning wood and coal, it keeps the dirt outside, outside of the house. Uh, popular, more and more popular, is people installing it in their car garage. It gives them the privilege of having the boiler in the house, nearby, and not the expense of running a large, a long underground pipe into the house. Um, it's nearby, they can actually use it to heat their shop, their garage, their workshop, whatever they have there. And, uh, and they can have room to stack firewood, put a coal bin, things like that. But yeah, indoor also is a good idea. That's my preference. I like to tend my, my furnace in my house. I have in my house basement. It's nice to get to go down there at night. Last thing before I go to bed up in the morning, first thing. I don't have to bundle up to go outside and shovel snow off the snow pile, remove the tin from the pile, of uh, wood or anything like that to try to fill the furnace. So question number three is going to be, when should water storage be used on the boiler system? There's a place for water storage. Uh, it's often called thermal battery. And um, the, when a thermal battery is necessary is when the boiler is a low mass boiler. And low mass just simply means that there isn't very much water capacity in the boiler. When you're burning a, a solid fuel like wood or coal, when your fire shuts down, your draft is uh, shut off, that idles the fire back, but there is still residual heat left in that wood pile, coal pile, that has to go somewhere. It doesn't shut off immediately like, immediately like a gas burner or an oil burner does. And so there has to be enough of water capacity to be able to absorb that residual heat. And in a low mass boiler, I'm talking like maybe 10, 15 gallon water capacity in the boiler, that's not enough, it will boil. And so thermal battery is necessary in a situation like that. Um, the other benefits of a thermal battery are 
or when you have an uneven heat load. And this I run into this most often in especially woodworking shops where there is a, where there's finishing happening and there's exhaust fans that are running at certain times throughout the day, which creates heat load spikes. And uh, the thermal battery helps to even that out, where it can it can pull off of that thermal storage without suddenly flooding the boiler with a tremendous demand. And uh, the other that one benefit of that is that you can have a much smaller boiler than. Normally, I size in a situation like that. I'll size the boiler for the specific heating demands of the building, and then size the thermal battery to cover for the extra spike that would re be required when uh, the, when that extra heat load comes on. And uh, that saves cost. It also improves the efficiency of the boiler. However, <clears throat> thermal batteries are not necessarily desirable in every application. And in a traditional heating appliance uh, where you have like floor heat applications or, um, or regular baseboard heat, uh, it's not necessary and it ends up becoming mostly an expense. It, it, because you have all that extra surface area, it also will create an extra place to lose heat. And uh, so there's some inefficiencies that go along with it that you have to weigh out. I, um, we use them application specific and um, not necessarily as a, as a recommendation for every heating, heating situation. Our Glenwood boilers, or not low mass, but they are designed to have enough of water capacity in the firebox, I mean in the water jacket, that it doesn't need a thermal battery under normal operating conditions. Ex unless, like I said, there's the unique application like heat load spikes. Okay, next question is, um, what is preferred, an open or a closed loop system? What are the benefits? Closed loop is generally better um, in an open loop system, you tend to have more trouble with air elimination. Bigger size pumps are required uh, because you don't have the pressure of the system helping you move water. And uh, if you ever want to get technical, um, a closed loop system, a circulator pump, only becomes a little, a little method of, of moving the water through the system just simply by creating a, pressure dif pressure, a slight pressure differential. When you have an open system, the pump has to do everything. It has to actually pump the water, not just circulate it. And so that means that your pump capacities have to be factored into that. Typically I find that people have um, end up getting pumps that are too small for the distance they're running because the pump manufacturers generally spec their pumps out for closed loop systems not open because that closed loop is by far the most common method of uh, method of heating in the um, in the heating industry. The only applications that I know of that are open system is outdoor wood boilers. The other thing is is that when you go with an outdoor wood boiler that is an open system, you have to keep your indoor system separated. You have to run a plate exchanger in there. And a plate exchanger keeps the uh, it keeps the outdoor system completely separate from the indoor so that the indoor can stay under pressure because all of your heat transfer equipment is designed for pressure. And those heat exchangers are can be problematic. There are plates, little plates in there, and if you're what, and because you have an outdoor boiler that you continually have to have to add make up water to the to the boiler, if you're not very very careful about your about keeping your boiler additives up every time you add water, like your pH improvers and your anti-scale inhibitors and all that, if that is not done religiously, your plate exchanger will plug because it gets calcified in there and little deposits that end up being deposited on those plates and they are not fun to take apart and clean, not at all. And they're kind of expensive too. So with a closed system, none of that's necessary. You can just you can just plumb the two boilers right together. You don't have to worry about warranty on your on your indoor boiler um, because of that potential contamination with a failed plate. Um, it, so that, that's one, those are the biggest advantages. There is another application specific advantage that comes with a closed loop system and that is that you can run your pressure higher, your water temperature higher because of pressure in the system. Like with a pressurized system your water temperature can safely reach 220 degrees 
we don't recommend that you go that high because many PEX pipes can't handle that. Actually, none of them can. And um, so, as long as you're doing all steel and copper, you're safe at 220. We do that now and then when we're doing a thermal battery and the customer wants to store as many BTUs as possible, uh, we can run up to 220 degrees. And uh, if you're doing an air to water exchanger, your higher water temperature is necessary. It's harder to get the amount of heat that you need out of the duct coil, say for instance, in a duct work hot air system in a house with 160 or 70 degree water than it is at 180 or 200. And so usually, usually the, the higher temperature in those applications is better. When you're going with gradient four heat, that's not, that's not one of the factors. But uh, you're still back to water life is affected by, by, uh, by closed versus open. Shorter boiler life open, longer boiler life closed, generally speaking, and um, and also better system perf performance with a close loop system than with an open loop system. Okay, next question. So on outdoor boilers for the PEX tubing, what do you recommend? Oxygen barrier or non-oxygen? Is it really worth the extra cost? Uh, oxygen barrier definitely because you're putting this thing in the ground and it's a one-time expense. You don't want to have to dig it back up again. Uh, it's many boiler manufacturers that have open loop boilers will say it's not necessary. I recommend my customers put it in regardless because you're going to end up when prob probably well some someday in the future you might wish you had a closed loop system and then you're going to if you want the warranty. On a, on a Glenwood, for instance, you have to dig your pipe up and replace it, and that is not that's that's not going to make you very interested in changing. No. So we do. I do recommend if you're doing an installation, it's not that much more expensive. Most boiler manufacturers offer it either way. Why wouldn't you go oxygen barrier? One thing I will steer you away from is the PEX Alpex. That's a, that is a product that has PEX aluminum PEX. And I've had significant trouble with that stuff separating underground and creating leaks. So I would not recommend going that route at all. Okay, good to know. Um, on the same topic of PEX tubing, what do you think about wrap insulation versus the solid pack? Solid pack insulation is so much more expensive. Do you think it's worth the extra cost? If you're going the distance, definitely. If you're going a short distance, it might not be a big deal. If you're going wrapped, definitely bury your pipe below frost line <clears throat> because the, the insulation value in the in the wrapped stuff is less than what it is in the other um, and obviously you need better insulation whenever you have the greatest temperature differentials and so but the closer you have it to the surface the colder your ground's going to be the greater your temper dif temperature differential the better insulation you have to have and so I would say that you know by all means, I, I, I would sort of recommend going with the, with the better grade stuff. What did you call it? The pack stuff. Uh, solid pack? Solid pack. It's, yeah. what, what it is, it's actually closed cell foam insulation. It's polyurethane closed cell foam insulation. And that has a very, very good heat resistance, uh, uh, very good uh, insulation value. In fact, I, but it's a pain to handle. And so that's why a lot of people kind of, there's, we're kind of steer towards a wrap, um, plus the cost benefits. Here's the thing: if you're spending ten, twelve thousand dollars for a new boiler, and you're going underground with pipe, you're spending, you know, let's say you're spent, you're going a hundred feet, and you're deciding whether you should spend thirteen dollars a foot or ten or nine, let's say nine dollars a foot. It's yes, it's fifty percent less money. But look, you're only saving a couple thousand dollars, mm. and in in the long run, your your performance is going to be better. You're going to use less fuel because you're not going to have as much heat loss underground with a better product. I just I just really strongly encourage uh, people not to try to cut corners here. Uh, it's a temptation, but you shouldn't do it. 
Okay, great answers. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to answer these questions for us. I really hope that you guys find this video helpful. Um, we do have more boiler information on our website. Make sure you check out wood-boilers.net. If you like our videos and our information, please give us a thumbs up. Click subscribe to our channel in the corner. Share us with your friends. Thank you guys for watching and have a wonderful day.